I mean, you hear that? Do you hear that? I had to damn go French fry. Hello everyone, welcome to You Can Do This, and today we're gonna master the french fry game. We are gonna cook french fries in potato starch. Why? We're gonna add a little extra starch on the outside, which is gonna get it nice and crispy. We're also gonna cook it in a brine first before we fry, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna get salt inside the french fry. Why do we wanna get salt inside the french fry? Because as you know, salt draws out moisture. So when you throw salt on french fries, even though you should if you're cooking them the regular way, if you throw salt on french fries, it's gonna start drawing out the moisture and the crispiness is not gonna last. So if we're putting salt on the inside, we won't have to season on the outside. And the starch is gonna add an extra layer of crispity, crackly goodness. We're gonna make a mixture right now that we're gonna boil the french fries in. All you need is three cups of water. First you can do about, about a cup. And I have right here 60 grams of potato starch. You can use corn starch too, but potato starch, french fries, just seems to make sense. We're just gonna hydrate this and kind of make a slurry. Also have two tablespoons of salt. That's gonna seem really salty, but aggressively salty fries. We're gonna bag these. We're just gonna boil them. The great thing about boiling water, it naturally regulates itself. It's never gonna get above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And you are just gonna pour this in the bag. I'm gonna use the displacement technique where you just get a bowl of water. You're gonna submerge it. This is just gonna push out the air. Since it's gonna be at 212 degrees, get bags that are tempered that can handle that sort of temperature. We're gonna drop it in there. We're gonna leave it for 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. We'll pull this out. That was a little hot. I don't recommend doing that. You see it's like a sludge in there, so I'm gonna try to drain these out as best as possible, and then I'm gonna pull them out and let them dry a little bit on the rack. So all these are out now. There is a little bit of, see this, jelly stuff on the outside? That's fine. That's the starch. It's gonna provide that extra bit of crispiness. The water that was in that is gonna burn off. Now, the water in that is gonna burn off. So when you go into the fryer, don't overload your fryer because there's a little bit of residual moisture in here. Remember, it was boiling. You are gonna let these dry as much as possible, but that gel is really not gonna go away. So you're gonna take these, then you're gonna jam them in the fridge. You wanna drop that temperature uh, because if something's warm, it keeps cooking. Back to the fridge. We're gonna cook all of them, but I wanna cook one for you real fast. And we're gonna drop it in the fryer. I'm frying it at 385 degrees. That's high, because all I want to do is crisp the outside as fast as possible. I don't want to cook the interiors anymore, because they're already done. Brine's already on the inside, so we're not going to salt them afterwards, because as soon as you salt a fry, it starts dying. So essentially, we're creating a faux batter on a pre-seasoned fry. Simple. You only can cook one fry at a time. So to get a serving, you'll need three days. I'm kidding with you. So I know people are like, very into the thrice fry, but to really do that effectively, you need an industrial fryer. Something that has a recovery time and can maintain temperature by pumping tons of gas heat under it. If you're frying at home, as soon as you dump that first thing of fries in, that temperature is gonna drop. There's a big pickup to get back to where you need to get. Like if you're serving fries for a bunch of people, like you can't wait for that uptake. Not discounting thrice fry, double fry, that's all great. But in the reality of the situation, that method works best when you have an industrial fryer. Now take a look at this french fry. See those ridges on there? That's where that gelatinous stuff used to be. So that is an extra, like how could that not be extra crispy when you have all these ridges happening? And your interior is perfectly soft. And there, ladies and gents, the most bang for your buck for the crispiest fries. If you want to see how to up your game with a couple extra steps, click here. Today, we're going to put tomato soup inside of a dumpling wrapper made of cheese and then fry it. So you're going to have that like grilled cheese tomato. <laughs> 